what is good youtube it's your boy kill coming back with another video man today we're gonna go ahead and break down my boy pass on jump super dope super hype record um it's out on spotify right now so you can get it on spotify apple music really all streaming platforms it's out on so you can get it everywhere link will be in the description super dope um so i'm just focused on one part of the song today and i'm gonna let you guys hear it as is with um everything on it so basically the finished product for the most part and then we're gonna go back through and break it down and i'm gonna give you some sauce on how i got there so let's go ahead and play it all right so as y'all can hear the beat is crazy it's a lot going on so it's a lot he got to cut through so i had to make the vocals really cut through the beat but not be like overpowered and still sit nice in the mix um so we really just gonna get straight into it uh if you like that sound stay tuned for the whole video i'm gonna give you some tips and tricks on you know how to get a clean sound um, if you don't like that sound, you can go ahead and get off the video right now. You feel me? Don't even waste your time, my boy. But I'm pretty sure y'all like that. So I'm going to go ahead and break it down. All right. So first thing I put on here is this virtual mix rack, Slate Digital. Um, I use this on my templates. I pretty much use this across the board. I like the sound of this. So it's, I, um, there's a lot of different modules within virtual mix rack, but I'm just using this virtual channel and I'm just giving it a little saturation. Love the sound of it. Real simple. I mean, um, it's not too much to explain. You got different algorithms here and then you just got your input and your output, how hard you pushing it. So if I play it, you can see what's going on with it and then we'll talk about it from there. Jump down the boom. I'm not talking to jump on a room. All right, as you can see, I am completely slamming it. I'm maxing it out. I'm slamming it. But it's cool, though, because it's not distorting it. As long as it ain't no distortion, I'm good. I'm getting the desired effect that I want. So I'm using my ear, and I wanted that effect. I wanted that a lot of saturation on this vocal, but it's not straight distorted. That's not what we was going for. We weren't going for distortion, but it's making it cut through, and it's giving it the high end that I want. So after that... I went with Avalon, so I pretty much use this. If you watch a lot of my videos, you've seen this plugin a million times. You know that I use this. Countless mixes, you know what I'm saying? The Avalon VT737, it's the GOAT. Uh, it's just a clean sound. It's a clean sound, good compression, good EQ all around the board. So I didn't even do too much on here, though. Um, like I said, I recorded these vocals, and I mixed and mastered this whole project. So if you guys check it out on Spotify, let me know what you think. But... Yeah, not too much on here. Um, I just did some light compression, and I did a little bit of a cut on the bass, and then I did a little bit of boost on the treble. Just just real simple uh, processing right there. I didn't want to do too much. I just really wanted the the sound from the Avalon mainly. So just those tubes, that, that emulation of the tubes. Obviously, this ain't no real Avalon, but yeah, the emulation of the tubes and that warmth from the, amp, uh, the Avalon, that's really what I wanted. So uh, let me play it again. You can see what this Avalon is doing, and you can look at these settings. All right, so if you're looking at the meter right there in the middle, you can see I'm getting about 2 to 3 dB of gain reduction, which is good. at. That's negative 2 to 3 dB is good ballpark range if you're talking about any LA 2A style type compressor. So um, I'm hitting right where I want to hit. It's giving it good compression. It's putting it in a nice pocket. It's catching that vocal. Um, I got a medium, slow, medium, almost slow release. Medium, slow. It's a little bit past medium. Um, so not a super, super slow release, but it's hanging on to that vocal for a good little second. And then I got this attack a little bit more towards the fast side. So medium fast attack kind of going on so it's not grabbing the vocal super super fast but it ain't taking too long to grab the vocal so it's just a nice balance and it puts the vocal in a nice pocket to where the vocal still can breathe 
and you know be a little bit dynamic but not too dynamic and everything is still within the range all right, so moving on. I'm trying to make this video fast. We already like five minutes in. I'm just trying to get y'all a little salsa. Look at the settings. Listen, if you like what you're hearing, try it out. Don't mix with numbers, though. So ballpark range. See what happens with your vocals. Um, and this song was recorded with a TLM 103 mic. Um, so I got the Shure SM7B, which is what you guys are hearing right now. And I got my TLM 103 in the booth. Uh, great mic. I love both of them. But uh, this mic is super easy to EQ too. It's a little bit harsher on the high end than the Shure SM7B, the one I'm talking on right now. The, the TLM 103 is a little bit harsher, but it's easy to fix with some DSing. All right, so next I put this uh, Infinity Q on here from Slate Digital, Infinity EQ. And I ain't do too much with this either. I rolled off. If you notice on the Avalon, I usually filter to 80 on here. I honestly don't even know why I didn't do it on this mix, but I ended up doing it anyway on this Infinity EQ. So I still did it. I just did it on a different plugin, but that's usually where I do it first is on the Avalon. But I did it on this Infinity EQ, and I did it to about 80. And then I did a couple of dip outs where I felt like he sounded kind of weird like weird frequencies so that's something that i always do so if you got slate infinity eq or any type of um eq like this similar to this even the built-in eq with logic the stock channel eq you could do this just make different points make the point small and you're going to do what they call a sweep where you just go through and you just pull up frequencies you exaggerate them and you hear them and if you don't like it you just duck it out you don't got to duck it out extremely but just duck it out a little bit so I'm going to play it one more time, and I'm going to actually solo it this time so we can really hear it. And then I'm going to go ahead and do like a mini sweep as an example and show you what I'm talking about and why I took those two frequencies out. Jump the yeah, yeah. I'm not type to jump on a roof. Yeah, yeah. Well, watching some thought of boo. Okay. Chill with my seat drunk on a goose. Ah. All right, so I just made a new point, as you can see, and I paused it so you can hear what I'm saying. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take this. And I love this Infinity EQ because it's just so easy to just change the size of these points and just move them around anywhere and, you know, just go crazy on the EQ if you need to. But first things first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this cue point pretty small. So about like this because you want to make sure that you're zoning in on the frequency. You don't want to have it too wide because you affecting too many frequencies so we zoning in on frequency we're gonna play it we're gonna start back low and we're gonna play it we're gonna sweep and we're gonna hear something weird i might even hear something else weird new that i might just want to take out you know what i'm saying so let me play it jump the double yeah, yeah. i'm not type to jump on a roof yeah, yeah. well watching some talk to boo okay. chill with my seat drunk on a goose ah. all right so if you're listening to headphones or you're listening to monitors you can hear that when I pull that frequency up, it got this weird kind of like tinny sound. Um, if you listen real hard, you can hear it, but that's still in the vocal. So when you start hearing those weird sounds, either tinny or boxy or muddy or anything like that, you want to pull that out as much as you can without affecting the body of the vocal. So um, a frequency like that, I would probably only dip out a couple of dB. So if that, you know what I'm saying? So that, I'm gonna dip that out like 0 0.75. So almost one dB, let's play it. Jump the double. Yeah, yeah. I'm not type to jump on a roof. Yeah, yeah. Well, watching some thought of boo. Okay. Chill with my seat drunk on a goose. Jump the double. Yeah, yeah. I'm not type to jump on a roof. Yeah, yeah. All right, if you was listening close when I turned it off real quick, you could tell it got like dirtier. So this is just cleaning it up. Those low end, muddy, weird frequencies. I just dipped a couple of those out. Um, you can really go crazy with this on the sweeps. My only advice with this is don't ever go too crazy on the cuts, the dips. You know what I'm saying? You want to make sure you got a small cue point and you want to make sure you don't pull out too much from the vocal. You want to make sure that you're still keeping the body of the vocal. So with that being said, let's go ahead and move on to the next plugin I used on this mix, uh, which is, of course, the SSL channel, man. You know we got to use the SSL channel. I'm using this pretty much every mix straight up. 
I'm gonna just keep it a thousand with y'all. But it's a very versatile plugin, so it could be used on every mix. So basically, filter it out again, just to be safe. And then uh, I just really don't like any muddy low frequencies that don't need to be any vocal. And like I said, anything really below like 80 for sure, for sure, for sure. You're not gonna need, especially in a deep male vocal. Like you're not. There's already enough mud, lowness, mud or whatever down there. Like you don't need it. And he got a deeper voice, so I just really cut up on here. I kind of went a little crazy. Not gonna lie, I had to look at that. But I uh I took this up to 120. You know what I'm saying? Which is a little a little much. But since his voice is so deep, it's fine. Like it works out. Like if I'm just playing again, and this is with the 120 cut. Jump the double. Yeah. I'm not tired to jump on a roof. Yeah, yeah. We're watching some thought of boo. Chill with my seat drunk on a goose. All right, so um, after that, I did a boost right here at the 10K. And I boosted that joint to like 2.6. So not OD, but I just wanted to give it more of a presence. Now, if I take it out 2.6, if I put it negative 2.6, you'll see how significant that 10K boost is. Let's play it with that negative. All right, as you can see, I just put it back and you could hear, you know what I'm saying, that dullness went away and it started to get that bright, shiny top in again. So 10K is a key frequency for that. If you feel like your vocals is dull and they need more presence, give it some 10K. If you still feel like it needs some presence, 10K and 8K, I use both of those at the same time. I'm always boosting my 10, always boosting my 8, because I know that those are two frequencies that are going to help me cut through the beat. They're going to help me get clarity, and they're going to help me get that shiny top end. So, um, and also another good frequency that I like to mention is uh, 20K. So those three frequencies, the 10, the 20, and the 8, all key for the high end of the vocals. If you want that bright, high end, but not sharp, but bright, really really cutting through the mix high end of the vocal you gotta get those boosts around those areas and that's pretty much for every vocal now it all depends on the vocalist how much you gotta boost but those are key frequencies that are proven key frequencies that pretty much always work it's just a matter of you know how much you're doing next um i did another boost at around the 4k and uh i went to uh, 2.2 so all my boosts they ain't been too crazy 2.6, 2.2, around that range, no five. Like, you can do that. There's been songs where I've had to boost five, uh, you know, DB and stuff like that. But for this vocal, I ain't need it. All right. Then I did another little boost right here, 1.2. And I did a 2.0 right here. So, again, not too crazy with the boost, but I am boosting this high end up. Now, if I turn this SSL off, you can hear how much weight is pulling in this vocal chain. So, let me turn this off. And let me play this joint without it, without the boost, and let's hear it. Jump the double. Yeah, yeah. I'm not tired to jump on a roof. Yeah, yeah. We're watching some thought of boo. Chill with my seat drunk on a goose. Pest and master never come to play. Trust I'm being tough or rough or feathers every day. All right, without the SSL, you can hear it wasn't bad because we had all the other plugins running and processing that was pulling a lot of weight too, but. It just got duller. It sunk back into the mix more, and it didn't sound as polished. So what we did with these boosts, even though they was all subtle boosts, they all counted on the SSL just to sit the vocal right where it's sitting. So like I said, sometimes it takes a lot of small adjustments to get to the to point in the mix that you want to get to. So I'm going to go ahead and play it one more time for you, and then we're going to go to this next plug-in. I didn't really do too much else with the SSL. These are my settings right here. Um, but you can see I did make a cut at 315, 2 dB. Once again, not too crazy with the cuts or the boost. But uh, this was needed because there was a lot of mud around that area. So, And that's another known frequency. In between three to 500, you're going to have that mud, that boxiness. So that's a good frequency range to look to chop that out. Jump the double. I'm not tired to jump on a roof. All right, let's get to my next plug-in, man. The Pog Child, man. It's my favorite right here. 
Um, just a real super simple, easy compressor to use. Um, like I said, I like to do multi-layer compression. So obviously my first layer of compression was the LA-2A tube style compression, the smooth compression, the smooth everything out. Um, right here, 737, ran that. Then after that, I had a little bit of bus compression on this SSL right here. And you can see where I'm hitting that. Jump, I'm not trying to jump on a roof. So it's actually hitting it pretty hard, but it's pretty transparent, so I like it. And it kind of crisp it up, so um, yeah, we're going to ride with that. Then my third layer of compression would be this pole child, which we was just on. So uh, real simple, um, time constant, you know it's three. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, but like for real, like three for rap, like rap vocals, even like melodic vocals, it just works, bruh. Like three, the... The attack and release on that three time constant is just is, is fire. So after that, I just went with the threshold of about three. I'm hitting it pretty hard. Let's play it. And I'm actually hitting it really hard. You know what I'm saying? But it works. So this is just really, it's grabbing that vocal. It's not grabbing the OD fast, but it definitely is applying a pretty hefty amount of compression to the vocal. Jump and I'm not to jump on a roof. All right, so yeah, I had to make him super loud, but I had to make him control. So I definitely used a lot of compression to achieve that. Um, but it's just about how you use it and using compression and layers and not putting all the load on one compressor. So that's how your compressors be sounding bad. So if you out there, you just started and you put in like all the processing on one compressor, bro, you really messing up like. You got to at least use two to three compressors. Like, I would say, I, I most of the time I use three. You know what I'm saying? I just use each one sparingly to get the sound that I want versus just maxing out one. And I'm just turning this threshold all the way up. And I'm just going to squash this vocal. Like, you end up with a dead vocal, bro. You're not going to end up with a good sounding vocal. Or either you're going to end up with a whole bunch of compression artifacts, pops and clicks and all these unwanted noises that just don't make your vocals clean. Like, these vocals are clean. They're cutting through the beat. Even though you got all this crazy stuff going on in the beat, it's still cutting through the mix and that's what we want to achieve every song all right so next after that man i went with the 1176 low noise legacy um pretty simple just to explain this man medium attack and then i went with the medium fast released you know what i'm saying so um if you don't know how this 1176 work uh, i said this in a lot of my videos but i'll say it again because you know it's new people coming in uh the bigger the number the faster it is so if i go seven it's gonna grab that vocal boom instantly it's gonna freaking squash that vocal basically you know what i'm saying so i got it in the middle so i'm letting the vocal breathe but i still want the peaks and all that to get caught so i got a medium attack you know what i'm saying so it's gonna grab that vocal but it ain't gonna it ain't gonna grab that vocal too fast and squash it and then this release i really wanted the vocal to breathe too so i got a pretty medium fast so we if we seven, we fast. The release is fast. It's letting go. It's letting go. It's letting go. It's letting go. But I wanted this to hold it to kind of still put the vocal in a little pocket. So I'm using each compressor to kind of put the vocals in a little pocket. Um, and then after that, just to top it off, man, just a simple de -esser. And I used two de -essers. I'm sorry. I ended up skipping over my first de -esser. I'm sorry about that. I don't know how I did that. But this one's real simple. Classic wide band. Y'all probably seen it in a lot of other videos, but... Um, so this is one of my go-to. So another technique that I love to do is two compressors. So if you're doing a lot of boost, you, you're going to naturally bring high end. You're going to naturally bring harshness. You're going to naturally bring all that. So what you need to do is you need to go ahead and use two compressors. Use one halfway through your vocal chain like I did. And then use one at the very end of your vocal chain just to top everything off. Just, just boom, smooth everything out one last final time. So that's what I did. These are my two DSs. I could play it and you can see these two working. This is a classic wide band, so it's kind of putting a top over the whole vocal. But the way I'm doing it is subtle, so it's not muffling it or anything like that. And then I got this um this another wide going with the waves DSer. Jump and a boom. I'm not to to jump on a room. Well watching some thought of boom. All right, and you know, that's pretty much it as far as the main vocal chain. We already at about 20 minutes, so I want to go ahead and wrap this up, but I do want to show you guys a few more things before I get out of here. 
So let's close this vocal chain and let's go ahead and show you a little bit of the sins. Um, my sins, I pretty much like to have the same setup. I add and change stuff depending on the song, but as far as what I start with, um, I always like to have a couple go-to delays on deck that I use all the time and a couple of, uh, you know, go-to reverbs. So basically all I did right here uh, on these sins, I got a doubler, I got uh, my go-to H delay, I got uh, some of my other go-to delays, I got my reverb right here with a couple other reverbs on here. And then I got uh, my one fourth delay, one half delay, just a couple more delays. You know what I'm saying? I like to have these delays on deck because these are delays that you probably going to use on the song at some point in the song. So it's better to just have it ready to go. You know what I'm saying? Then having to pull up all these different delays without having it. So that's another good thing. Make a template, make a recording template, make a mixing template. Or you or make one that could be used for both, but either make a template, get a template. It's important to have a template because it saves you so much time. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Now with my reverb, I will show you guys my reverb right here. I went with the R verb. I love the R verb. It's from Waves. Uh, pretty easy reverb to get access to, but it's a, a very good reverb, a versatile reverb. You can get a big sound out of it. You can get a small, smooth sound out of it. Whatever you need to get out of it, you can get out of it. So I'm just using a hall. I EQ'd it a little bit to roll the low, low end off. You always want to EQ your reverbs. Roll that low end off. Don't have no muddy reverbs so your vocal can slide. You always want your vocal to slide. So EQ your verb. Don't have mad buildup on the low end of the verb. I double EQ'd it, actually. Pull up the Infinity EQ. I pulled off them highs, pulled off them lows. And, you know what I'm saying, I got my reverb right. That's why I say able to work like this because he got a deep voice, but we still cutting through. Listen one more time. Jump, Jenna. All right, yeah, that sound good, man. So that's the verb right there. If I solo it, y'all listen to the verb. Jump, Jenna, I'm the type to jump on a roof. Well, watching some daughter boo. All right, uh, yeah, so the verb, you can hear it, but it's not like over, overpowering to where it's just leaking out. Um, if you want to see those settings one more time, I'll pull that up. With a 20 on the pre-delay, 4.04 on the time, room size 100. Um, you know, I EQ'd it, of course, like I said, and it's a haul. You know what I'm saying? I usually, I, I like to use a lot of plates, but um, this one was a haul. But yeah, I'm going to wrap it up. I'm not going to bore y'all, man. Um, just wanted to show y'all the vocal chain, uh, the reverb I used. Ah, uh, real quick, real quick before I get out of here, man. These ad libs, because I do not be showing y'all what I be doing to ad libs like that. But I sauce these up a little bit. Nothing too crazy. Um, I panned them off a little bit to the left. So just to five, nothing even crazy. But I just wanted a little bit of separation from the main vocal. The, the ad libs is, is not too many. So it's not like nothing crazy going on. So let me play them. Pass the master, never come to play. Trust I'm being tough or rough with feathers every day. Come from different struggles. All right, so he wanted them to be heard, but kind of more felt than heard. So I panned them out. I turned them down quite a bit, and then I went ahead and put, like, a filter on there. So I used the stock Logic EQ, channel EQ, rolled off the highs, rolled off the lows, kept the mids. Um, and then I just put this little plate right directly on the channel, messed with the mix knob. That's why I love uh, Sound Toys plugins because most of all, they plugins got mix knobs, and you can just put them directly on the track, whether that be a quick delay or whatever you're trying to do, put it directly on the track and then just, just set it how you want to set it. So these are my settings for that. I just reverted them out. So just to play them real quick, let me solo them so you can really hear them. I never play like every day. All right, so just flood it with reverb, but you can still hear them and then they turn down. So we play with everything. Best the best to never come to play. Never. Trust I'm being tough or rough with feathers every day. Come from different struggles, had to hustle every all right, so if you like the sound of that or this video helped you out in any way, shape, or form, go ahead and smack that like button for your boy one time. It helps the channel, and you know what I'm saying? Um, it lets me know that y'all watching the content. Uh, leave a comment if you got any type of questions or video requests. I'm knocking those out. I'm hitting y'all with the content for the rest of the week, so go ahead and hit me up now. So I can go ahead and get your video started. Um, if you guys need any mixing and mastering consultations, recording mixing templates go ahead and hit my website akilmixed.com i'm gonna get you right over there link will be in the description 
Once again, the killmixed.com link will be in the description. So I appreciate everybody that's working with me and continue to work with me. And I will catch you guys in the next video, man. I'm out.